शिवोपिखाखात राधाकांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे विंद्रावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणामानु तुहरि कल्पतरु वेश्चा कृपासिंधु भयेवचा पतितनाम पावने भयो वैष्णवे भयो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय All these wires. Hare Krishna, everyone. Uh, welcome to our yes. How are you, Prabhu? When did you come? Kabaya. Uh, uh, 19th of October. Huh. Welcome to New Zealand. Okay. Um, yes. So thank you very much for being present here. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, meeting you first time from Radha Kund, India. Jai. Radha Kund Sham Kundi Ki Jai. Prabhuji Ki Jai. <clears throat> so we're reading from Chila Prabhupada Lila Mirtha, and the chapter is chapter 14. And the title is Struggling Alone. Struggling Alone. We all have to struggle alone one day. Chila Prabhupada struggled so hard. Uh, to establish this wonderful movement. And here we are, part of this movement. <clears throat> so I'll read page 301, Struggling Alone. A mendicant, Prabhupada was temporarily dependent on the goodwill of his Mayavadi acquaintance with whom he regularly ate and conversed and from whom he accepted shelter. But what a great inconvenience it was. He had come to America to speak purely and boldly about Krishna, but he was being restricted. In Butler, he had been confined by his house middle-class sensibilities. Now he was silenced in a different way. He was treated with kindness, but he was considered a threat. Dr. Mishra could not allow his students to hear the exclusive praise of Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Spending most of his time in his new room, Srila Prabhupada kept his typing 
and translating. But when Dr. Mishra held his yoga classes, Prabhupada would sometimes come out and lead a kirtan or lecture. Robert Nelson, one of Prabhupada's sympathizers in New York, is writing. I went to Dr. Mishra's service and Dr. Mishra talked. Swamiji was sitting on a bench and then all of a sudden Dr. Mishra stops the service and he gets a big smile and says, Swamiji will sing us a song. I think Dr. Mishra wouldn't let him speak. Somebody told me Dr. Mishra didn't want him to preach. So Dr. Mishra was a Mayawa, the personal, <coughs> sorry, person who was giving shelter Srila Prabhupada for some time in New York. Every morning, several hours before dawn, Prabhupada would rise, take his bath, chant Hare Krishna on his beads and work at his uh, translating while outside he his closed in windows windowless chamber dawn came and the city awoke he had no stove so daily he had to walk to seven blocks to the riverside drive apartment to cook oh it would be late morning when he would come out onto the busy street. He would walk north on Columbus Avenue amid the steady flow of pedestrians, pausing at each intersection in the sweeping breeze of the river. Instead of the small town scenery of Butler, he passed through the rows of 30 uh, 30 story office buildings on the Columbus Avenue. At the street level were shoe repair shops, candy stores, laundries, and continental restaurants. The upper stories held the professional suites of doctors, dentists, and lawyers. At 75th Street, he would turn west. <clears throat> and walk through a neighborhood of brownstone apartments, and then across Amsterdam to Broadway with its center island park. The greenery here would, could more accurately be described as black, black tree, since it was covered with soot and city grime. Broad where displayed his produce shops and butcher shops with, with, their ex, uh, with their stands extending onto the sidewalk. And old men sat on the benches in the thin strip of park between the northbound and southbound traffic. The last block on 75th uh, before Riverside Drive held high-rise apartment buildings with doorman standing. 33 Riverside Drive also had a doorman. So I'll stop here. Srila Prabhupada, Lila Mrita Ki Jai, struggling alone. So see how much struggle Prabhupada went through uh, to give us this wonderful Krishna consciousness movement. We should be very, indeed, very, 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 very grateful to Srila Prabhupada. And definitely we must try our best to help him continue this legacy of spreading Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, yeah. So we're reading, reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 24, Text 17. <clears throat> there.
So you repeat, first we'll read word by word. Please repeat after me. Sangama, Sangama. Khalu, Khalu. Viprarishe, Shiveneha, Shariri Nam, Durlabho, Munyo, Dadhyur, Asangad, Yam, Abhipsitam, Abhipsitam, संग संग महाखलो विप्रर्षे संग महाखलो विप्रर्षे शिवेने हा शरीरी नाम शिवेने हा शरीरी नाम दुर्लभो मुनियो दधियुर Durlabho munyo dadhyur Asangat yam abhipsitam Asangat yam abhipsitam Sang maha kalau viprarishe Shivene ha shariri nam Durlabho munyo dadhyur Asangadhyam abhipsitam Sangamaha khalau viprarishe Shiveneha sharirinam Durlabho munyo dadhyur Asangadhyam abhipsitam. Anyone? Sangama khalo viprarishe. Shiveneha sharirinam. Durlabho munyo dadhau. Sangadhyam abhipsitam. Anyone else? Kalo viprishe. Shibeneha sharirina. Durlabho munyo dadhyur. Asangadhyam abhipsitam. Okay, word by word. Sangmaha association. Halu, certainly. Vipra Rishe, O best of the Brahmanas. Shivena, along with Lord Shiva. Iha, in this world, Shariri Nam, those who are encased in material bodies, Durlabha, very rare, Munya, great sages, Dadhyu, engaged themselves in meditation, Asangat. Being detached from anything, a yam unto whom abhipsitam desiring. Translation and peppered by his divine grace, Shila Prabhupada, Shila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Translation The great sage Vidura continued, O oh, best of the Brahmanas, it is difficult for living entities encased within this material world to have personal contact with Lord Shiva. Even great sages who have no material attachments do not contact him, despite their always being absorbed in meditation to, to attain his personal contact. 
So please repeat. The great sage Vidura continued. O oh, best of the Brahmanas, it is very difficult for living entities encaged within this material body to have personal contact with Lord Shiva. Even great sages who have no material attachments do not contact him despite their always being absorbed in meditation to attain his personal contact. Purport. <clears throat> Since Lord Shiva does not incarnate himself, unless there is some special reason It is very difficult for an ordinary person to contact him. However, Lord Shiva does not descend on, however, Lord Shiva does descend on a special occasion when he's ordered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then he descends. In this regard, it is stated in Padma Puran that Lord Shiva appeared as a Brahmana in the age of Kali to preach the Mayavad philosophy as Sripad Sankracharya, which is nothing but a type of Buddhist philosophy. It is stated in Padma Purana, Mayavadam asach chastram prachannam baudham uchyate mayeva vihitam devi Kalo Brahmana Murtina, Lord Shiva, speaking to Parvati Devi, foretold that he would spread the Mayavad philosophy in the guise of a sannyasi Brahmana just to eradicate Buddhist philosophy. This sannyasi was Sri Pad Shankracharya. In order to overcome the effect of Buddhist philosophy, and spread Vedanta philosophy, Sripad Shankaracharya had to make some compromise with the Buddhist philosophy. And as such, he preached the philosophy of monism. For it was required at that time. Otherwise, there was no need for his preaching Mayavad philosophy. At the present moment, there is no need for Mayavad philosophy or Buddhist philosophy. And Lord Chaitanya rejected both of the philosophies. This Krishna consciousness movement is spreading the philosophy of Lord Chaitanya and rejecting the philosophy of both classes of Mayavad. Strictly speaking, both Buddhist philosophy and Shankara's philosophy are but different types of Mayavad dealing on the platform of material existence. Neither of them, these philosophies, has spiritual significance. There is a spiritual sig significance only after one accepts the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita, which culminates in surrendering unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Generally, people worship Lord Shiva for some material benefit. And although they cannot see him personally, they derive great material profit by worshipping him. I'll repeat the translation. Sangamaha, before that, Sangamaha Kalau Viprarishe Shiveneha Sharirinam Durlabho munyo dadhyur sangat yam abhipsitam. The great sage Vidura continued, O oh, best of the Brahmanas, it is very difficult for living entities encased within this material body to have personal contact with Lord Shiva. 
Even great sages who have no material attachments do not contact him, despite they are always being absorbed in meditation to attain his personal contact. So, is it echoing too much? You know, it's too much echo. What about if I turn it off? So here it is mentioned that uh, the, this is a conversation between Vidura and Maitreya Muni. Uh, Vidur, you know who Vidur is, eh? He is the brother of Dhritarashtra, Mahabharata. And uh, Vidur did not participate in the war. Because Duryodhan insulted him so much before the war that he decided to leave Hastinapur and go on pilgrimage. Tirat Yatra Parnikalpa. And he went to most of the Tirat uh, pilgrimage places in India, Ganga, Yamuna, and all those Badrinath and so on. So he went out, he left. Uh, Hastinapur. And while he was on his pilgrimage, he met many great saintly people. It is mentioned in the scriptures that when you go on Tirath, like when you go to Vrindavan or Mayapur or Jagannath Puri, any, any of the Tirath, it is the main purpose is to at least take darshan as well as to associate with the the sages there, the sadhus, and hear them, ask questions. This is very important when you go to the dham. So, before the Mahabharata war, Vidura left. And Maitreya is a great sage. He's one of the best of the brahmanas, and he, he had a, he's, a, he's a devotee of Lord Krishna. And in this verse it says, it is very difficult for the living entities encased within this material body. We are encased in this body. And this philosophy is in Sanatana Dharma only. Others don't know about it. And who are we actually? We are spirit souls. We are not this body. That's the first and foremost lesson given in Bhagavad Gita by Krishna. Our ID is, we are spirit soul, we are not this body. And we don't die even. We are just like Krishna. We were here. Natva evaham jatu nasham natva neme janadipana chaiva na bhavishyama sarve vayam ataha param. 2.12 Krishna says, never there was a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, and nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. So we are there like Krishna. But at the present moment, we are encaged, our soul is encaged here in this body. So how can we free the soul? We are encaged in this body and we are also encaged in this material world, twice encaged. We have to free the soul from this body. By doing that, we'll be able to go out of this prison, which is this material world, back to the spiritual world. So, how to get out of this material world or how to free our soul from this body we are doing that right now. Sadhu Sang, Nam Kirtan, Bhagavat Shavana, Mathura Vas, Sri Murtira, Shradhaya Sevana. In Sri Chaitanya Charita Mirta, Bhagavan Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, 
First thing is Sadhu Sang, association of Sadhus, devotees. Sadhu Sang is happening all the time. Prabhupada has created or built, uh, asked his disciples to build as many temples as possible. Why? To give Sadhu Sang to the general populace. If people don't hear, they will never know that they are engaged. What they have to do, they won't know the uh, ultimate goal of life. They will come again and again, cycle of birth and death. So Sadhu Sang is um, association of devotees. And what does that mean? Harikatha, Harikirtan. And then you develop your knowledge about spiritual knowledge. And then you'll change your life. Uh, you will try to, and then you also do devotional. So Sadhu Sangha, Nam Kirtan. We are doing Nam Kirtan also. This is Nam Kirtan. Chanting your Japa is Nam Kirtan. Singing Kirtan, Hare Krishna or whatever, Vaishnava Bhajans, that's Nam Kirtan. So we do that and we should continue doing that. Never leave these things. Sadhu Sang Nam Kirtan, Bhagavata Shravana. Hear Srimad Bhagavatam. We can always hear Bhagavatam. Nowadays, the technology has advanced so much. Srimad Bhagavatam is here. We can hear from our great, great, you know, sannyasis, sadhus, in the pocket. Driving, you listen to it. So, you can't say that there is no sadhu and I can't hear Bhagavat. So, Bhagavat Shranam, you can do it now. And then, you can also read and hear yourself at home or with your family. Do that as far as possible. Mathura Vas means live in Holy Dham, Mathura, Vrindavan, Mayapur, but we can't do that. We are here in New Zealand, but this is Mathura and Vrindavan and Mayapur right here. So as soon as you come to the Eskon temple or any temple where Lord Krishna is there, Lord Ram is there, Jagannathji is there, that's Mathura Vas. And you can make your home. And you always you already made your home Mathura Vrindavan. Because Lord Chaitanya is there, Jagannathji is there. So that's Mathura Vas. So live in the Holy Dham. Mathura Vas, Sri Murtira, Shadhaya Sevana. So Mathura Vas, Sri Murtira means serving the deities of the Lord, serving the Lord. So all the devotees have, at least they have Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So you should serve the deities with love and devotion. So uh, this is how we will rid our soul from this engagement. This is the process. And we should continue this process until, we'll, until we can with this, this physical body. And then as soon as we are able to do that, the, the soul leaves this material and then also out of this prison. And you will go back to the real home, which is Golok Vrindavan Dham, and serve the Lordship there in Vrindavan. That should be our ultimate goal. Okay. So here something is mentioned about Lord Shiva. So we'll talk about Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is not ordinary pers person. Uh, he is one of the three murtis. Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh. And, uh, and uh, these are guna avatars of Lord Krishna. Lord actually Lord Krishna expanded himself as Vishnu and Brahma and um, Gunavatar means mode of good. Um, they are the three modes. Brahmaji is mode of passion, Rajasik. Uh, Vishnu is mode of goodness, Lord Vishnu. Uh, 
Sattvic and Lord Shiva, he has the purpose to serve as in the mode of ignorance, which is Thamsi. Although he has that portfolio, he is not Thamsi. Lord Shiva is Param Vaishnava. There is a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, 12, 13, 16. Beautiful verse, you know it. Nimnaganam yatha ganga devanam achyoto atha yatha vaishwanam yatha shambhu purana nam idam tatha. <clears throat> Translation is Nimnaganam yatha ganga. Just as Ganga is the greatest of all rivers, Devanam Achyuta Yatha, Lord Achyuta means Lord Krishna. He is the supreme among all the devas, deities. Vaishnavanam Yatha Shambhu, and Lord Shambhu is the greatest of all Vaishnavas. Purana Nam Idam Tatha. Srimad Bhagavatam is the greatest of all Puranas. So Lord Shiva is, uh, although he is in charge of this Thamsik Gun, he is in charge of destroying the universe, you know. But he is a pure Vaishnava. So uh, some facts about Lord Shiva. What does Shiva mean? Shiva means Shiva means most auspicious. The most auspicious one. And I've already mentioned uh, Shiva is known as the destroyer within the Trimurti, uh, which is which includes Lord Brahma and Lord. Vishnu, he is the destroyer. Brahmaji is the, is the creator, secondary creator. Lord Vishnu is the maintainer of the whole creation. And Lord Shiva has to destroy destruction. Lord Shiva has different names. Can you give me some names of other names of Lord Shiva? Shambhu, Shankar, Ashutosh, Mahadev. Bholenath, Nilkant, is also known as Vishwanath, is also known as Trilochan, Three-Eyed, Trilochan, very good. So these are some of the names, beautiful names of uh, Lord Shiva, like Bholenath. Why he is called Bholenath? He is very Bola, means, what does in English both humble. He easily gives benedictions to whoever comes to him. He's very he is easily pleased. Easily pleased. Jaldi person ho jate. So he's called Bholena. And also he gives some benedictions and he gets into trouble himself. <laughs> we'll talk about that if I time permits. Okay, so. His Shankar, his Rudra, he's also known as Hara. Lord Shiva has three eyes, these two plus one in the center. Uh, if he opens that, he can, it's just like a, a what bomb? It will burn the whole thing. Nuclear weapon. It just burns, destroys. So that's the three eyed Lord Shiva. And his consorts are. Well, it is one, but she's, she also incarnates in different forms. Who is his consort, his wife? Parvati, Mata Parvati. Another name is Durga Mata or Kali Mata. These are all expansions of Parvati. So that Gauri, Gauri Shankar, you know? Cheravali, always rides on the line. Okay, so that's Lord Shiva. And Durga Mata or Kali Mata or Parvati are, are his Shakti. 
sponsored Shakti. And they help him to, you know, destroy the demons in this material world. Durga Mata, Kali Mata, their job is to help Lord Shiva to destroy demoniac people and all that qualities people have. Asuras and demons. And Lord Shiva also has children. Eh? He's a grahastha. He has children. Who are his children? Ganesh Ji and Kartike. Do you know he also has a daughter? Who knows? <laughs> yeah? Do you know the name? Okay. Yeah, it's mentioned he has a daughter. It's Kaname Ashok Sundari. Never heard. <laughs> I was doing some research, then I found, oh, he also has a daughter, Ashok Sundari. I don't know how bona fide this is, but that's what is mentioned. Okay, Ganesh is very important. Ganesh actually wrote all the Vedas. All right. And who, who dictated to him the Vedas? Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva uh, dictated the Vedas and Ganesh was actually writing the Vedas. Vyasadeva didn't write. He just dictated. So that's Ganesh. And Ganesh is worshipped in all the Hindu families. Very important deity. And yeah, but everywhere people worship Ganesh. Hmm. He's, uh, he destroys the, the obstacles that come in our life. That's how the... Vignesh. Yeah. Vigna Vinashak. Kartikeya is... What is his portfolio? Kartikeya. He's the general, eh? like the army commander. I don't know which army he led and which war he fought. We have to read and find out. What is his transport, Lord Shiva's? Not a cow. Nandi. Nandi is a bull. His transport is a bull, Nandi. And Nandi is a great devotee of Lord Shiva. Of course, he's the transport. It's amazing. Uh, different um, uh, personalities have different transport. Ganesh's transport is uh, the little mouse. But there is a meaning behind it, and I don't know what. There are some people who are able to explain why. Why they have these transports, different transport. Brahma is white swan. Hans and Lord Vishnu is Garur, the eagle. Amazing. Okay, so oh, not this ordinary two, huh? I don't, I don't know much about it. So, but they are yeah, special ones. And Lord Shiva, when you see Lord Shiva, tell me some of the things you, you see with him. One, he's covered with ashes. What ash is that? From the crematorium. He applies that on his body. Amazing. What else do you see when you see a picture of Lord Shiva? Yeah, a snake around his neck. And his hair, his matted hair. And then from the hair, Gangaji. What else you notice when you see Lord? Hmm? Yeah, he has his drum, Damaru. And Trident, Trishul, Mataji Abhul. He has a kalash. Okay. And Trishul. 
the trident. Who else carries the trishul, the trident? It's not only Lord Shiva. Durga Mata, his consort. To help him to destroy the Asuras, she borrows the tri tri Trishul from him and he destroys. The Trishul means that the three types of uh, miseries we face, Adhyatmic, Adi Daivik, and Adi Bhautik. Those three types of miseries, every living entity has to go through. And uh, hmm, anything else, Trishul, and uh, definitely here, what do you see? The third eye. He doesn't open it. He do yes, and he wears a tiger skin. Okay. So these are, and his garlands are made of skull. Everything is impure. Whatever he's you know, wearing, and you know, most of them are impure, like snake. It is mentioned that snake is Vasuki, actually, which is a not ordinary snake. Yeah, demon. I mean, people who are rejected, who don't follow, you know, the who don't worship God. He's trying to help these people to become Vaishnavas. That's why his, his army are ghosts and spirits when he walks. Okay? These people follow him. Oh, can Danny, do you know what those skulls are? Whose skulls are he's wearing? <laughs> why should he? Yeah, maybe. Well, I think I heard from someone, it is the skull of Mata Parvati. Because she so many times took birth and, you know, sometimes she, she kills herself. So he loves her so much that he just takes the skull and makes the garland. So she has come and gone many times. But Lord Shiva doesn't. He is there always. Mata Parvati comes and goes. Like Sati, when she, in Sati at Daksha, she killed herself in the fire because Lord Shiva was, wasn't given that respect and honor by the father-in-law, Daksha Maharaj. So she, just, she killed herself, I mean, suicide. So Lord Shiva collected all those skulls and made a garland. So he's so loving husband, isn't it? Such a loving husband. Okay, Lord Shiva is also one of the 12 Mahajanas. Swayambhua, Narad, Shambhu. Swayambhua, Narad, Shambhu. So Lord Shiva is one of those 12 Mahajanas. And we are instructed to follow in the footsteps of the Mahajanas to to progress in our devotional service, Mahajanas in their footsteps. He also, just like there are four Sampradayas, Lord Shiva also has a Sampradaya, and what is the name of his Sampradaya, Disciplic Succession? Rudra Sampradaya. Actually, it is Vaishnava Sampradaya. It is mentioned here. So, <clears throat> sometimes it's also known as Vishnu Swami Sampradaya. Rudra Sampradaya comes from Lord Shiva. And as we read in the purport, Lord Shiva came to, uh, came as a Mayavad philosopher. And he came as in this Kali Yuga as Sripad Shankara Charya, Mayavad. He, he preached Mayavad philosophy to counteract some of this Buddhist philosophy. And while <clears throat> he did that, at the end, he, instead of preaching Mayavad philosophy, he preached Vaishnava philosophy. He said, Bhaj Govindam, Bhaj Govindam, Bhaj Govindam, Muramate. 
All these philosophies will not help you, Mayavad philosophies. Will not give you mukti. The only person who can give you mukti is Lord Krishna, Mukunda. So he said, ultimately, towards the end of his life on this planet, he said, Bhaj Govinda. Silly people, you must worship Lord Krishna. So, dear, I think all the Hindus worship Lord Shiva. Because of lack of knowledge and association, their main purpose of worshipping Lord Shiva is to get material opulence. That's the main purpose. They worship. Good husband, good wife, nice children, house, properties, and this and that. And they and Lord Shiva gives them blessing, the boons. And most of Lord Shiva's and also positions, not only these things, but positions, they hold high positions in the society. But there's a weak point in that. What is the weak point? Yeah, they get entangled and they don't want to get rid of these things and they have to come back again and again. You know, when you get entangled in material opulence, oh, I have a nice house and, you know, I have lots of money and this and that and position, they, they forget about devotional service. But Lord Shiva, that's why it's called Bolenath. He gives them the benedictions. Because lots of them trouble him. Please, please, please give me. Quickly gives and gets rid of them. Rid of them. Go, go, take it. Because he is very busy. Lord Shiva is always busy meditating on the past times of the Lord Shiva. That's called Samadhi. He, when he's in Samadhi, what does he do? He just visualizes he's, he's, he's in transcendental platform he's watching all the leaders of the lord Shri, lord ram lord krishna's pastime that's what he loves doing and then and then his devotees come and always pray please give me this give me that and so he gives them benediction quickly so that's the weak point regarding that but on the contrary the the devotees of Lord Krishna is the opposite happen. You know, they become poorer as time goes. A very good example is Srila Prabhupada himself. You know, when he star, when he, I mean, he had, uh, when you read about Srila Prabhupada, he was well off. He's doing well. He had his own, uh, what's that, pharmacy, and he was doing business and as soon as he started well he was worshipping Lord Krishna from childhood no problem but later on everything was taken away by Krishna he had nothing he was alone then he followed the instructions of his guru Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasti Thakur and then prepared himself to carry out his orders but he had nothing when he came to America. He had one little, those bag, that bag, special bag from India, made of tin, you know. And he had only 40 rupees. And he had his Bhagavatam and typewriter. And that's what he took. Oh, I mean, to America. So see what he had at the end of his, it's not life, but part of his life. And then later Krishna gave him so much. This is Krishna, you know, this is Prabhupada's gift here. Prabhupada also came to New Zealand twice. I wasn't here. I think he did the sthapana of Radha Giddhari. Hmm. He stole by Shri So amazing, see? You can read the history when you walk through. Yeah, that's downstairs, yeah. Yeah, so this is Prabhupada's mercy. You know, Krishna gave him so much now, but Prabhupada didn't take anything. 
it belongs to his corn. Even though his, his son tried to sue his corn and get all the property, Gurudev was, Tamal Krishna Maharaj was our lawyer. And he, he counteracted, he wrote all the points and then the, the case went and then finally he was defeated. So, yeah, Lord Shiva is very kind. He gives benedictions to his devotees. But the, the, the problem with that benediction is that we get entrapped with Maya again. And we forget Krishna and devotional service, and then we have to come back. But Krishna's devotees, as I mentioned, we, they become poor, although they are really rich, actually, in the heart and should be. But materially, they are not well off. Krishna takes away things. Sometimes some devotees are given very hard time, very hard time by Krishna. But you. Acharya has mentioned that you should not stop chanting, reading, carry on, take shelter of a senior Vaishnavas, and you'll be all right. Hmm. Okay. Um, one of, can you mention some great devotees of Lord Shiva I mentioned in the scriptures? Ravan, <laughs> the famous Ravan. Uh, he was, I think he was one of the, the topmost devotee of Lord Shiva. He worshipped, he did tapasya austerity, and Lord Shiva appeared after some time. And he said, yes, what benediction you want? What did he ask for? Amar? He said, make me uh, immortal. And he gave him that benediction. Did he ask for that, Ravan? Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> so most of the demons, they only worship Lord Shiva because they want material opulence and material benedictions. So we have to be very careful what we ask Lord Shiva. Prabhupada warns us, please just ask him to give blessings so that we can continue worshipping Lord Krishna. Bhakti, get Krishna's bhakti. Ask Lord Shiva to give that bhakti because he's a Vaishnava and he can give that blessings to us. Yeah, so Ravan. Actually, once Ravan was given that benediction, he became notorious very, very. He was a terrorist, leader of the terrorist group. Uh, and he sent his uh, asuras to destroy the sadhus and you know, give them lots of trouble. And, uh, you know, he was so bad, he just, because he thought his amar means he will never die. He, he, he asked people to call him God, worship him, <clears throat> just like Hiranyakashi. But finally, he did such a wrong thing he did lots of sinful activities and then he kidnapped Mata Sita. Mata Sita, the concept of Lord Narayan. See how much sinful activity he did. It, of course, he did, he, I mean, captured other princesses and all, kept them in his <coughs> palace, even like Hiranyakashipu did the same thing. To capture, uh, kidnap Mother Sita, and then he did the wrong, the, the most wrong thing. He never thought that he, that will be his end, and he was destroyed. The whole of his family was destroyed. Even his Soneki Lanka, his his city of gold. Oh, everything was destroyed. So that's a lesson to people who worship Lord Shiva and they want material opulence. You have to be very careful what you ask for. Okay. 
Okay, what else I've got here? Oh, yes. Some of the past times of Lord Shiva. <clears throat> Lord Shiva has done many things in the history. In the Bhagavatam, he saved the universe from the poison, the halahal that came when the devas and the asuras were churning the ocean. Know that katha? Hmm. What, what came out first? The poison. And then it, it was creating havoc. So the devas, they, they tried to find out who is going to help. So ultimately, somebody suggests, go to Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva drank the poison and saved the universe from being destroyed. So that's one of those. And during that Leela, Krishna came as not in that one. As Purma Avatar. Krishna had some scratching. He wanted somebody to scratch his back. So he came as Kurma and that Mandarachal hill was placed on him. And what was the role? Vasuki, which I think Lord Shiva, another part, form of Vasuki is in Lord Shiva's neck. So they churned the ocean and the poison came out first thing. Yeah. So he saved the universe. Krishna appeared as Kurma. Yes, the other pastime is Mohini Murti. Uh, Mohini Murti. One day Narad Muni told Lord Shiva <clears throat> that Krishna appeared as Mohini Murti and she was so beautiful, so beautiful. And Lord Shiva said, how beautiful was she? I can't tell you. She was really beautiful. So, then Lord Shiva went to Vaikuntha and said, and requested Lord Vishnu to show him that form. So Lord, Lord Vishnu showed him the form of Mohini Murti. What happened? Lord Shiva was captivated. Mata Parvati went with him too. And the Mohini Murti was walking. Lord Shiva was following, forgetting Mata Parvati. So he was captivated by that. And finally, Lord uh, gave him, uh, empowered him to control himself. And then you know, he gave up that idea. So even Lord Shiva was captivated by Mohini Murti. This is also from Srimad Bhagavatam. And another pastime is about one demon. Um, Birkisha Maharaj is the mostly tells this story of Brikasur. Brikasur was a demon. Um, he also, Narad Muni is everywhere. Brikasur went to Narad Muni and asked him because he wanted something, you know, like Lord, uh, like Ravan wanted some benedictions, material. Hiranyakashipu wanted material benediction. Brikasur is another demon who wanted some material benediction. So he asked Narad Muni, uh, please tell me which of the gods gives benediction very quickly. I don't have to do a lot of tapasya. He said, Lord Shiva. <laughs> so, because we did Lord Shiva's tapasya. And of course, yeah, Lord Shiva appeared and asked him, yes, I'm very pleased with... Oh, no. You know what he did? What tapasya did he do? He did a yagna. He cut his flesh. Nobody can do that. And offered his flesh in the yagna. Who? But Lord Shiva didn't appear. He cut the flesh from the leg, all finished, and then thigh, and then his hands. He was just waiting for Lord Shiva. He said, Lord Shiva was not appearing. Then finally he decided to suicide. 
commit suicide, cut his head and offer. Then Lord Shiva appeared and said, yes, I am very pleased. What do you want? Look at, do you know what he wanted? You remember that past time? Yes. What a benediction. <laughs> he said, please give me this bone. If I touch somebody's head, it will shatter in millions of pieces. It's a blast. Okay. Lord Shiva said, Tathastu, take it. So this Vrikasur, what did he do? Huh? He tried. The first person was Lord Shiva in front of him. Let me try first on Lord Shiva. <laughs> Poor Lord Shiva had to run. <laughs> so Lord Shiva had to run to save himself from this. This past time. And finally Lord Shiva went to Vaikunt. Lord Vishnu was there. And Lord Vishnu saw Lord Shiva coming and Vrikasur behind him. Just like Sudarshan Chakra was following Durvasha Muni. So, quickly Lord Vishnu manifested as a, a Brahmana, uh, a Brahmachari, nice, beautiful looking, handsome Brahmachari, and went to Lord, uh, went in front of Brikasur and said, oh, Hello, Brikasur, how are you? And all that. And why are you in such a rush? Come on, calm down, relax. Take some rest. So Vikasur just listened to him because he was so captivating. He just followed his instruction. So, yeah, what are you up to? Now tell me, what, what are you up to? He said, I'm, I'm following Lord Shiva. I want to, you know, test the benediction he gave me. Oh, don't you know? Um... During Daksha Yagna, you know, um, his father in law, Maharaj Daksha, you know, cursed him. Since then, Lord Shiva has gone crazy. Yeah. And uh, he does silly things like he gave you this boon, you know, crazy thing. Why don't you try it? Because it doesn't work. Why don't you try it on your head? So he tricked him. So he just put his hands over his head and that, that was the end of Brikasur. He died. So these are some of the past times of Lord Shiva and Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay, I think I'll come to a very short period. Right, so there are many pastimes of Lord Shiva and uh, Lord Shiva in, Shima, in uh, Brahma Samhita, you know, uh, is described his position. I'll just quickly do this and we'll finish it off. Uh, who is Lord Shiva compared to Lord Krishna and uh, Lord Brahma and so, and so forth, Lord Ram? Uh, it is that Shiram Yatha Dadi Vikara Vishesa Yoga. Brahma-samita-545. Translation. Just as milk is transformed into curd by the acid, action of acid, but yet the effect Curd is neither the same as nor different from its cause, let that milk. So I adore the primal Lord Govinda, of whom the state of Shambhu is a transformation for the performance for the work of destruction. So Lord Shiva is neither equal to Krishna. or neither Krishna, but he's very close. He's just like milk, which is Krishna, turning into 
curd or yogurt. Now yogurt cannot go back, change its form, chemistry, back to milk, nowhere. So Krishna comes as Shiva and the purpose, he has a purpose for this destruction and in charge of Tamsik Gun. <clears throat> Uh, it is stated here, uh, the real nature of Sambhu, the presiding deity of Mahesh Dham is described. Sambhu is not a second Godhead other than Krishna, one Godhead. Those who entertain such discriminating sentiment commit a great offense against the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, one of those ten offenses to recite. The, supreme, the supremacy of Shambhu is subservient to that of Govinda. Hence, they are not really different from each other. Govinda manifests as a guna avatar in the form of Shambhu. Here it says, Krishna comes, who is separated portion of Govinda. So, that's the position of Govinda. Uh, and Lord Shiva, the difference. Uh, we are told in the scripture that Krishna has 20, 64 attributes total. And then uh, I, I don't really remember how many Lord Shiva has, 55 or something like that, you know? 55 attributes. Whatever, but of course, it's not equal to Krishna. Okay, so I'll stop here. Any comment? We can worship Lord Krishna. There's no word. Uh, but, you know, according to what Prabhupada has mentioned, ask for the right thing. We have learned a lot from these asuras, what they are, and then what happened to these asuras at the end. So we should be very careful. Right, Grantra Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Nithai Gaur Premanande, Hari Hari Go. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Oh, I still have the mic.